Hello, I'm Dr. E. Barry Gordon. This video has been divided into two parts because of YouTube length limitations. The intact video can be seen on my website, www.thehiddendisease.com. Hello, I'm Dr. E. Barry Gordon, and this is the sixth video in my series on testosterone deficiency. This is one of the most important videos about this disease because if you ever plan to address the state of your testosterone health, you had better be familiar with what follows. Without this information and knowledge, it is highly unlikely that you'll ever get an accurate answer as to whether you do or do not have testosterone deficiency. Today's subject is testosterone blood tests, what kinds there are, which one to get, and how to interpret it. You're likely wondering why I'm making such a big deal over this. After all, shouldn't your doctor know which kind of testosterone blood test you should get and how to interpret it? Yes, he or she should. But the unfortunate reality is that most doctors don't know. Remember that an overriding factor in all aspects of testosterone is that most doctors don't want to know anything about it. They don't want to hear about it. They don't want to read about it. They don't want to think about it. When it comes to testosterone, their minds are closed. Testosterone blood tests are routinely and readily available. For a doctor's office to order one is usually no more complicated than checking off the appropriate box on a laboratory form. The problem is that testosterone blood tests are seriously flawed. I'm not referring to the technical part of doing the chemical analysis but rather the numbers that are used to identify adequate or inadequate levels of the hormone. They cannot be relied upon to diagnose a deficiency in testosterone. There's no point in following my advice to find out if you have testosterone deficiency when there's little chance that your blood test will be interpreted correctly. I'm sure the reality of this will become obvious to you as we proceed. Before we get to that major subject of this video, however, the first problem you may encounter if you want to know your testosterone level is that your doctor may refuse to order the test. Sounds odd, doesn't it? But the fact is that it's not uncommon for me to hear that friends or relatives of my patients or people who've heard me on the radio were unable to have a testosterone blood test done because their doctor refused to do it. This uninformed reflexively negative attitude on the part of physicians is so detrimental to human health that it will be the subject of my next two videos. You will also get my opinion as to what you should do if faced with a refusal to be tested for or treated for testosterone deficiency. You need to know that currently there are two blood tests for testosterone routinely done by laboratories, the total testosterone and the free testosterone also sometimes known as bioavailable testosterone. Almost all the testosterone in the blood is attached to protein and because of that is biologically inactive. A small amount is unattached or free. This is the active hormone, the stuff that's doing something. The total testosterone measures all the testosterone and since most of it is inactive, it's a poor indicator of whether a person has an adequate amount of the hormone. In addition, Studies have shown that as we grow older, the percentage of testosterone attached to protein actually increases, making the test essentially worthless in the older population. So if you have a testosterone test, make certain that the free testosterone is at least included. The major flaw with testosterone blood tests is that the so-called normal ranges given by laboratories are accepted by doctors and patients alike as being adequate ranges. They're not. These reference ranges are certainly normal, but normal is very frequently not a good thing. It's normal to develop testosterone deficiency, just like it's normal to get arthritis, to get cancer, to get old, to die. Different laboratories may test for testosterone in different ways, so their reference range numbers vary quite a bit. But I'd estimate that as many as a third of those people whose free testosterone levels fall within most laboratories normal reference ranges are actually testosterone deficient. I'm not alone in having this opinion. No less an institution than Harvard Medical School published a study on this very issue in 2006. Their conclusion, 
Quote, Laboratory reference values for testosterone vary widely and are established without clinical considerations. Close quote. Established without clinical considerations. That means established without regard to how much testosterone is needed to be healthy. That Harvard study also included the results of a survey they conducted of laboratory directors asking their opinion of Harvard's conclusion. Quote, 23 of the 25 laboratory directors responded that clinically relevant testosterone reference ranges would be preferable to current standards. Close quote. Think about that. Clinically relevant testosterone reference ranges would be preferable. So what we have, unbelievably, is Harvard Medical School and 92% of polled laboratory directors saying that current testosterone normal reference ranges are irrelevant to any question of testosterone adequacy. It's really amazing. A lot of you are probably wondering how such an astonishing situation came about. I think the reason is what's most obvious. Adequate testosterone levels for men and women simply have never been determined. When blood tests for testosterone first became available, scientists had to test many presumed healthy people to learn the normal range of the hormone. Men and women who were more fatigued than they used to be and were a bit depressed or anxious weren't viewed as being ill. They were just getting older. And I guarantee no one was ever asked about the quality of their sex life. The disease of testosterone deficiency was simply not recognized. It still isn't. So everyone with early symptoms of testosterone deficiency were considered to be healthy and their testosterone levels were mistakenly believed to be adequate. There's another major reason to view current laboratory ref reference ranges as being mostly useless when it comes to diagnosing testosterone deficiency. It applies to both sexes, but it's more obvious with women's reference numbers. One laboratory gives a woman's free testosterone normal range as being from 0.6 to 9.2. According to those numbers, two women can have a 1,500% difference in the amount of an active hormone in their blood and yet both would be considered healthy. <laughs> That's simply not biological reality. In stark contrast, if you average the reference ranges for the most active form of thyroid hormone, free T3, you don't find a 1,500% difference between the top and bottom of the range. You find the only, only a 260% difference. Nothing, however, demonstrates the inadequacy of current laboratory ranges more than a major laboratory in California which specializes in doing more complicate, complicated blood tests. Their range for free testosterone in women is, quote, up to 0.38, close quote. That's right. They and others don't even bother to give a lower number. At least they're being honest. They're not putting down on paper what isn't known. Hopefully, you're wondering now how to come up with a realistic lower limit of adequacy for a testosterone blood test. It only takes a bit of very simple arithmetic, just a division. But it's better read than heard. Go to my website, www.thehiddendisease.com, look at the testosterone testing section at the very bottom of the medical studies page. You'll learn how to easily determine a usable number for whatever laboratory you're using. As I mentioned earlier, my seventh video will begin the discussion of physicians' negative attitudes towards testosterone. It's something else you need to know if you want to deal with this disease effectively. I need your help in alerting everyone to the existence and nature of this disease of testosterone deficiency. Please tell your friends and relatives about these videos. Email them to everyone in your address book and ask them to do the same. I'm Dr. E. Barry Gordon. Thank you for watching.